Well, welcome back, guys, to week five. We're glad you're with us. I'm here with Pastor Mike. My name's Ryan, and we're, uh, we've been really excited to walk you through this 10-week study in the Gospel of John. Hopefully every week you have been uh, spending time in God's Word, uh, digging into your workbook, really asking God to speak to your heart. You've been uh, spending time looking at the memory verse. Hopefully you, you've been uh, desiring to put God's Word in your heart and your mind. Um, but it's it's been great. We're in we're in John chapter seven, the tail end of John chapter seven, and uh, and into John chapter nine, and uh, it's been so full of truth. And Jesus gets uh, gets pretty clear about who he is. He really gets uh, really clear about who he is. John had wanted wanting to wanted to make sure that we understand, but now Jesus really does. And and I love mystery and and suspense books. Uh, in, in movies. I love the character development. More and more you begin to understand the character and, you know, whether it's getting to understand and who who is uh, Jason Bourne and, and diving into that or the more you learn about Jack Bauer in the series 24, right? The more you understand the true identity of these guys, it draws me deeper. It draws me deeper into to their character, who they are, and I want to know more. And in this section of Scripture, Jesus begins to tell us Again, more about who he is. The Jewish leaders and the teachers, the Pharisees, they've been digging. Who are you? Who do you say you are? They've been digging, but now Jesus is getting bolder. He's getting bolder about who he is, and and he gets a little bit more uh, revealing. And we look in John chapter 8, verse 12. It says this, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So this is the second I am statement that Jesus shares. Pastor Mike shared the first one. Uh, In the past he shared, he talked about where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Uh, Now he says that he is the light of the world. Remember all of these, if you are trying to keep track, you want to study a little bit more, all of these are on page 254 in your workbook at the back of the book. Uh, but Mike, let me ask you, what, what is this truth that Jesus is the light of the world? What has it done in your life? Man, that's such a good question. Uh, I think a few things, Ryan. I think number one is Jesus, first of all, you know, like I was blind, but now I see. You know, I was spiritually blind before I knew Jesus. And Jesus being the light of the world literally turned the light on in my heart towards God. And, and that's the first thing I think about when I think about Jesus being the light of the world. You know, but then that didn't stop there. It didn't stop with salvation. It kind of moved to what we would call sanctification and spiritual growth. Jesus being the light of the world in my life has given me direction. It's given me like shown me where to go when I needed wisdom, showed me where, what to do when I needed his insight as a husband or as a dad or as, a, as an employee. Um, you know, Jesus is light. The, the fact that Jesus shows me the way to go is super helpful in all those and many other areas as well. But um, if I really wanted to zone in on Jesus being the light of the world and what it's that, that concept or that truth has done for me recently um, is that Jesus being the light of the world has revealed blind spots in my life. You know, I've, um, I'm not a perfect man. Um, none of us are, of course. None of you guys are as well. But, you know, one of the thing that, things that um, is valuable to have in our life is friends and brothers um, who really understand that concept uh, out of the Proverbs that as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And sometimes we have blind spots in our lives that the, the Holy Spirit through another person will kind of turn the light on in your own life um, and reveal an area of sin, an area of, um, of, uh, of blindness in your own life. And that, that's happened to me even in the recent past where a dear friend shared some things with me about the way I was, um, the way I was talking and the way I was interacting with some people that, that he just had some concerns about and had some, um, issues with and just said, Mike, I think this is something that, that, uh, that you need to go before God and, and deal with. And, and if in, and I did that and I had to make some apologies to some people and, and it was a hard thing, but I'm so grateful, uh, for brothers who, who cared enough about me to allow, um, themselves to be used by Jesus uh, to reveal some blind spots in my own life. And men, we need that. We need people in our lives who will shine the light of Jesus in areas of darkness in our own hearts and then to be responsive to those when when he does. So those, those are some ways that Jesus has been the light in my life. So. Yeah, it's a great response. We need accountability yeah. in, in, from people we trust, 
we invite it in. Sometimes it comes without an invite, and we don't take it as well. But when uh, when we have a heart that's, I, I want to learn, uh, I think it's a great thing. And yeah, Jesus did the same thing as the light of the world for me. He revealed things to me, revealed sin in my life that I, I needed to get out. Um, and he and he continues to do that. He continues to help me uh, understand that I'm a new creation, right? I'm a new creation in Christ, and he has really shown uh, an um, He's shown in me some things that I still, years ago, he worked on, but he's still working on. Uh, and, and that's what Jesus does as the light of the world. He disperses darkness and brings light. And let me ask you, is that true of your life? Has he done that in your life? Has he helped disperse darkness and bring light? Um, you know, the moon doesn't have a light source. It reflects right? It doesn't have a light source, it, uh, but we can see it clearly at night uh, because the sun is shining on it, and then it reflects this powerful beam at night. It seems as though the sun is out because it, you know, when the, when the moon is really shining, it, it can reveal things. But our lives have to be also a reflection of Jesus. They've got to be a reflection of Jesus. And I wondered, have you, have you thought about that? Have you thought about that in your life and what that looks like? And as you go about your day, do you, do you regularly think about ways, big or small, to reflect the love of Jesus to others? I mean, think about that. Even, even, even those you disagree with, uh, even those that you don't like that much, uh, I want to encourage you to try it. I mean, think about it. The person that, that maybe looks differently uh, than you, uh, the person who is a troublemaker or looks like a troublemaker, smile at them. Smile at them big. Open the door for them longer. The person whose bumper sticker you disagree with, let them in. Show kindness. The, the, the person that you think is going to uh, maybe give you a bad look or you've had cross words with in the past, introduce yourself in, in a way that's kind and loving. I just I started thinking about how do I let the light of Jesus reflect in my life? Do I do it with only my friends? Do I do it with only people I care about? Or do I do it with even people that I disagree with, people that maybe wouldn't even... Uh, uh, want to even hear what I have to think because they're, they're maybe shut down in that way. So see what happens. See if some divine appointments, some divine interactions don't happen. Don't begin to crack through the hearts of people around you because this is what it's like to be the light of the world. He is the light of the world, but he wants us to be the light of the world as we reflect that goodness that he has into the life of other people. Um, Think about Matthew five sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Uh, so Jesus, he, uh, he really tells us he is the light of the world, and he makes an even bolder statement. Uh, in John eight fifty nine. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Now this, this was a really bold statement. And sometimes people will say, Jesus wasn't, wasn't a good teacher. Uh, or Jesus was a good teacher, but he wasn't God. You know, they'll say, I'll give you. He had some good insights, but he wasn't God. Or he was a good spiritual leader, but again, he, he wasn't God. Or, or he'll, they'll say, Jesus never claimed to be God. Well, this, this just isn't what the Bible says. This isn't what we see from, from Scripture. It isn't what we see from Jesus. This was such a bold statement of claiming to be God, and he used the phrase, the same phrase that, that God the Father used when speaking to Moses uh, through the burning bush. Uh, we see that, that in Exodus 3. He said, I am that I am. Um, and, and it was so clear to the Jewish leaders that Jesus was claiming to be God here that verse 59 literally says they picked up stones to kill him for blasphemy. I mean, this was, it was so clear that Jesus was claiming to be God, they were ready to kill him. And so, uh, Pastor Mike, let me ask you, the study continues in John chapter 9 and talks about Jesus giving sight to a blind man. Uh, in, in what ways has God opened your eyes since becoming a follower of Jesus? Well, you know, I, I think about, Ryan, I think about how Jesus has opened my eyes and to what it means to be a, a godly husband. Um, I didn't grow up with a dad. Um, well, I had a dad, of course. We all had a dad. Um, uh, but my dad died when I was young, when I was six years old. And it was just my mom, my brother, and I for my whole teenage years. And I, I remember one of my... Um, 
uh, hesitations in marrying my wife, Wendy, was, gosh, I don't know what it means to be a godly husband. I didn't have an example of that in my own life. And, uh, but as I've walked with Jesus and learned from others, he has opened my eyes to what it means to be not a perfect husband, but a husband that at least <laughs> hopefully gets it right more than I get it wrong and loves God. Um, same thing as a dad. Um, I have four kids, and uh, he's opened my eyes to what it means to be a, a father who loves Jesus, who looks at his kids and says, guys, follow me as I follow Jesus. And, um, and that's that I could not do that without Jesus opening my eyes. I talked a minute ago about blind spots. God, Jesus has opened up my eyes to, to sin in my life that, that I need to repent of and that I need to um, deal with um, in order to be a better follower of his. Um, there's, there's really, honestly, Ryan, there's not an area of my life um, that's any good at all that isn't good because Jesus, that's good. The only reason why it's good is because of Jesus. Yeah, it, Jesus has forgiven me, cleansed me, redeemed me, and given me purpose, um, any good that comes in me is Jesus. It's not me. Yeah, I think of uh, the line from Amazing Grace. I once was blind, and now I see uh, about how he has opened our heart. One of the ways I, I really um, know that God is real is that when I believed, when I believed he had the power to forgive me, when I had the, belie- the, the belief that he had the power to give me new life, um, he opened my spiritual eyes. Like things that I didn't once understand all of a sudden became clearer. Not that I now understand all. It isn't like I'm, I'm, I have this passageway to understand all the things of God. But all of a sudden I have wisdom where I didn't have wisdom before. Now some of that comes from building spiritual muscles and, and building wisdom by asking each, each day, Lord, give me wisdom today. Help me to be a better leader. Help me to be a better father and husband. Um, things that I didn't previously see the error between uh, in Scripture, when someone um, would would try to say oh, it's this, well, no, it was scripture, script, that, there's error in your thinking. There, here's what Scripture really says, because I've I've begun to understand, and God's opened my spiritual eyes to it. Wisdom that I had, the ability to understand right and wrong. Like, wait, I I shouldn't do that anymore. That, that's wrong. Like, so my spiritual eyes, and and hopefully your spiritual eyes have been opened since you've uh, understood Jesus. That. Just like he gave sight to this blind man in John chapter 9, he too can give uh, sight to you spiritually, a different sight, not a, hey, I, I'm, I was, I've got bad eyesight, now I have 20-20. I'm not talking about that, but I now, I now see with spiritual eyes that understand and are wiser and have a better ability to choose between right and wrong. Uh, so once again, John's desire is for people to understand clearly uh, who Jesus is and, and, and the fact that he proved himself to be God. Uh, that Jesus clearly said, I am. I mean, what a bold statement. Jesus said, I am. It hard, no one at the time doubted what Jesus was saying, so much so they wanted to kill him. So this is how clear John wants people to know, this is the Jesus I follow. I follow one that proved himself through miracles. I also follow one that claimed it, and he showed it. And, and Mike, I believe in Jesus. Me too, man. And I hope you guys are seeing through this, this study, this quick study through the book of John, that Jesus was the mightiest man who ever lived. He was fully God, but he was fully man. And people divided over him. People fought over him. But, man, he was awesome. And he is the true light giver, man. He truly is, Ryan. Well, let's close in prayer, and then we'll give just a few closing instructions. Father, we... We love you. We thank you for what we've learned this week. We pray that it would penetrate our hearts. We pray for time at our tables uh, as we talk and we share and as we sharpen each other and as as the light of the world reveals to us truths. Uh, Lord, as uh, many of us once were blind and now we see because of Jesus, because of the great I am, I pray that you would uh, just allow us to grow closer to you and closer to each other. Father, we love you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So thank you if you've been watching online, if you've been uh, with us in person. Uh, Don't forget this week's uh, memory verse is John chapter 1, uh, 8 and 9. If you get a chance, share that with your table if you've been memorizing. And then don't forget, start tomorrow, week 6, day 1. Spend time in God's Word every day. God bless you, and we look forward to seeing you next week.